On February 25th, Patrick Marlowe is set to become the first player in San Jose Sharks history to have his number retired. Before that, we set out to visit him in Florida, where he and his family currently reside. We got to catch up with Patty and see how retirement life is treating him, as well as reminisce on his long, illustrious career. First off, wow, nice setting. How are you enjoying Florida? It's been good. Yeah, yeah it's been... Uh... It's been fun. There's always that, that learning curve, but uh, you know, people have been great, uh, and uh, kids are loving it. A lot of fishing and uh, <laughs> being outdoors, so it's good. Well, that's that's you without a doubt. Yeah. Let's get right into it. You're almost 18. You're 17 years old, coming to your first NHL training camp. What were your thoughts coming in then? <laughs> Be, I think, well, being that young and being that naive, I I actually had in my head like I'm. I'm here to make the team, which uh, obviously, obviously eventually happened. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that's, that was my whole goal and uh, focus at that at that young age. And looking back, it was pretty pretty lofty expectations to you know come in and, and try and make a team like that. And um, but uh, luckily enough, they they kept me for that that first year and uh, was able to stick around. And, I'm so glad that that was I was able to do that because of all the players I got to play well, with. Yeah, that team. Okay, so you've got guys like Freezy, Jeff Friesen, Marco Sturm, which great. Okay, guys close to your age, but then you've got Kelly Rudy, Mike Vernon, Tony Granado, um, uh, Mike Ricci, uh, Billy Holder, mm -hmm. um, Murray Craven. Yeah. Like, were you not intimidated by them? How did you feel when you walked in the room and saw all those NHL veterans? Those are the guys you're just watching on TV, and now you're on the ice with them. It's crazy to to think that and to to have that happen. So you just want to don't want to suck. Don't want to look. <laughs> you don't want to look bad. You just you know you want to put your best foot forward. And um, but what a what a great great room to come into uh, as a young player. And I always wanted to hang out with 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 all those guys right. all the time. And I looking back, I didn't even I didn't care about age or anything. I just wanted to be around the guys. I just want to soak everything up and. I think that was the best best part. I didn't I didn't even, like oh they're they're just like me. They're hockey players. Yeah. I didn't think okay well they're married they got kids all this other stuff. <laughs> it didn't even come in the equation. I just wanted to be with them. So it was. So were they were they like hey kid come on you come with us? So they were they were they were good that way. Yeah, all of them. It was it was unbelievable. I don't I don't know if I even played well I paid for the rookie meal my first year. But other than that, let's go for dinner. We got you. Don't worry about it. We got you. It was. Uh, were you uh, the only rookie on that team? Uh, Marco. Oh, Marco was a rookie that year yeah, too, right? Yeah, me and Marco, right. yeah. yeah. Uh, might have been one other one, yeah, yeah. but yeah. It Which, wasn't that many. You know? <laughs> no, there wasn't. There no, was a veteran it was, team. It was an older team and hard-working team, work, you know. Yes. I think uh, the group that obviously Daryl likes and Dean at the time likes was, you're, you're going to know you played the San Jose Sharks after the game. And you're going to feel all those bumps and bruises and you're going to have to earn the, earn the, earn the win, so. It was, uh, it was a good group to be part of. We'll talk about Kelly Rudy in a minute, but which other guys on that team really <laughs> influenced you? Like Tony Granado, Gary Suter, um, Mikey Vernon. Yeah, we, like, okay, yeah, I mean, okay, I, I, we get, we got all of them. All of them. We got to go. We got. We'll, we'll <laughs> jump into the Mikey Vernon thing. Mike Vernon, Kelly Rudy. You, true or not, you drove to work with him every day. Yeah, we would. Uh, We'd go to work, uh, mainly games. We'd yep. go together. Yeah. What Every kind day. of what kind of education was that in this back, in the back seat? Oh, it was. Well, you just you just sit. I just sat in the back and took it all in. Obviously, <laughs> Mikey and Kelly were holding the holding court and uh, you know teaching me the ropes by just <laughs> just listening. You know, I, you get to learn about the NHLPA, the the union. Uh, you know, all the things that they've gone through in their career, the ups and downs. Um, it was. Those are the, you know, those are the things that you look back on and you're thankful for. And um, coming back after games and you know staying up with Kelly and and uh, Donna and having a couple beers, talking about games and um, you know learned quite a bit uh, from from those guys. How valuable was it to live with the Rudys that was it first first year? Yeah, first year. Uh, it's hard to put it, you know. A value on it, it was uh, not being on my own, having somebody to talk to, not like feeling isolated or anything like that. Um, you know, having 
uh, being able to go over have meals you know yeah. have it was it was great it was a great setup and you know getting to know the family and something to do away from the rink instead of just sitting around playing video games or or doing things like that so but uh yeah I, i'll never forget after one game uh i think i was probably feeling down on myself or sorry about about something uh i can't can't remember exactly what it was but uh kelly was was like well is that is that really what's going on here or is there something else to it are you like are you putting in the work or are you just just want the result without the work and you know kind of one of those talks right. like maybe you're looking at this the wrong way and it uh it helped me out a lot i've heard a story that um for at christmas with the rudies you spent <laughs> you spent the time putting together the toys like t t yeah tell yeah. me that one yeah we uh night before christmas yeah. we were we were up uh i think we we're putting together a dollhouse and uh uh, some other stuff, maybe a basketball net or something like that. So it, yeah, it was. Uh, we were up for quite a bit trying to put those things together. There was a, some uh, some wine involved in, the, in that, but we it was uh, it was something. I know he talks about, it and I still All talk about it. Yeah. It was great. K Kelly says you spent more time with the girls than with him, though. Like you, you were you Playing, were like big brother. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah it was like a big brother for sure. <laughs> yeah, they were. It was just great to be be around them, and and it was uh, a sense of family, a sense of home, and. Um, kind of like a preview of what my life could look like in the NHL with a family and um, so uh, so thankful for you know them opening up their home to me and teaching me the ropes. But people may not understand, we were just talking about it, at 15 years old you were you had left home for hockey right? Yeah. Back home in Saskatchewan. Yeah. Okay. So explain how that goes at a 50, how, how does, how do mom and dad drop off your 15 year old son and say, see ya, tell me, tell me that story. Uh, now being a parent, I, I don't know. <laughs> exactly, right? Uh, Can you imagine dropping off? Yeah. Where it landed? It's, uh, I really don't think I get much of an option though. Yeah. I was, I was like, this is what I want to do. This is what I'm going to do. And, you know, being, uh being chosen for certain teams and getting drafted and you know this is the, this is the way the progression of things and um, much to you know parents you know not liking liking me have to do that they they know that's what I wanted to do so they were very supportive so all throughout my career at 15 mom drops you off or dad drops you off mom and dad yeah you go to Moncton to play in a tournament and yeah then from Moncton you and Jeremy Reach Jeremy. former NHLer yeah go to Seattle, drive, fly from Moncton to Seattle. Yep. And you, because you're now going to play in the WHL, you're playing junior, right? Yep. You're 15 years old, not quite 16 yet. Yeah. And did, did anything, did any time did you just go, what am I doing here? Like, did any, did that ever come over you? Probably the first, like, yeah, we, we flew in and I, hopefully I remember this, this right, but we, we had a, a game like pretty yeah. pretty like right either that day or the next day flying all the way from Moncton yeah and uh I'm like geez this is this is a lot like this is came one side of the country to the other side yeah. and just I'll never you know I'll never forget that first exhibition game yeah. at, and uh I think I was able to score like one oh, or shocker. one or two <laughs> shifts in so that kind of Ease the tension a little bit, but again, I'm I'm trying to make a team. I'm trying, you know, trying to show what I got to yeah. to the coaching staff and management. And uh, uh, Jeremy and myself were able to make the team that year. Yeah. And uh, there's a lot of Saskatchewan boys on the team, so uh, it uh, and some of them came in a little bit later. So it was it was a good group of guys. And um, junior is a great time because everybody that you're with, they all have the same goals, right. and you're all trying to help each other. You know, all trying to get to the NHL, so that to to have that that same mentality and that's uh, in that group, it's you can lean on each other and and make it uh, make it fun. Talking to Todd McClellan, your old coach, and he and he mentioned, you know, right off the bat, that small town Saskatchewan mentality, um, the work ethic, mm -hmm. the the drive, the the quest to just never be um, leaving anything short, giving everything you've got. How much of that was influenced by your upbringing, and you know, do you believe in that Saskatchewan 
you know, small town Canada, hardworking thing. Yeah, I, I definitely do believe in it. I think it's, uh, it's a lifestyle, obviously, and farming community and, uh, you know, in Saskatchewan, even if you live in the city, you, you, your family had a farm, right. basically, or, or you knew somebody who had a farm. So I think farming's part of everybody's life in Saskatchewan one way or another. And uh, it's hard, I mean, it's hard work. Um, yeah. Especially if you have animals. I mean, we had animals, and so you, you're married to the farm, basically. And uh, uh, it takes everybody to, to help out and to pitch in. Like, I remember traveling for hockey, and my brother and my sister having to do chores, my chores, well, chores. my chores when I'm gone, and um, vice versa. And I know I I'm, wasn't much of a morning person, so my brother would get up, <laughs> and he would, he would do the chores in the morning, and it was my job to do the feed the cows or pigs or whatever yeah. uh, after school um, but just seeing the the work ethic my not only my siblings but my mom and dad would do mom being a school teacher go go to school teach all day come home make us dinner be out in the field yeah. driving trucks uh, driving tractors um, it was yeah you never on the farm it's great because you'd be sitting there maybe summer Saturday or Sunday and all of a sudden Someone comes in, all right, let's go. Cows got out. <laughs> you know. So then it's like three o'clock. You don't get home till eight o'clock after bringing, like trailing the cows all home. And um, yeah, it, it, it was never uh, short of excitement. Let's put it that way. But it gave you that, that DNA. I yeah. mean, you had it in your, your yeah. character. You, uh, and if you didn't pull your weight, you knew exactly they would let you know. So was that? If, if you didn't pull your weight, they let you know. Kind of the same thing with that first team you were on? Yeah. Yeah. I would say so, yeah. It, uh, and it's one of those things when you're surrounded by people who are working, you, f you fall in line, yeah. you, you know? Yeah. You yeah. Gotta, you gotta, otherwise, it's, you're like, you're sticking out and you're not, not part of the group. So uh, learning that work ethic from, from them early on and trying to live up to that, I think, uh, being, because being so young, like you, just, works works tough. Like, yeah, I don't want to do that. I just want to, want to go do something else, you know. But uh, having that perseverance and and getting things done, it's right. it's helped me in my career for sure. Um, <laughs> hi, how are you, sweetheart? Do we have names? We have names. I'm not sure of all of them though. Somebody's coming for just to say hello. Wants to be in the interview. What's that? That's Minnie. That's Minnie. Hi, Minnie. How you doing, sweetie? Just gonna have my coffee. Yeah, she's looking like she's getting a little bit of a boost there. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, you came into a, a team that was fairly new to that area, right? Okay, 1991 we started in, uh, with the Sharks, and then um, 96, 97, 96, 97? 97, 98. 97, 98, yeah. right. Um, you come in. So it's fairly, a, a relatively new, uh, fan base to the National Hockey League game. Um, did you did you sense that? Did you did you think that you know that you were making an impact on it? Did it even enter your head about the the community that you were getting mm -hmm. into? Early on maybe maybe not as much, but I think what what uh, what I found was pretty cool was what early on when you start meeting all the fans and stuff. A lot of them are from Canada, <laughs> being in you know Silicon Valley and uh, having everybody flying in for jobs and things like that. So, um, but also even just the the fans that were originally from San Jose, they they grasped that the Shark team and made it their own yeah. like right away. So that was that was great to be part of that. And then to see over the years how um, where like our practice facility, how it's grown, how the game's grown. Um, and having kids involved in the minor hockey, it's uh, and meeting the people, and the uh, the parents, and getting to know them too. Just coming to the rink, I mean, just being normal. That that was pretty pretty cool. Doing part of that too. It's amazing how the game has grown in San Jose. Mm -hmm. I, do you recognize how much you were a part of that? Uh because those those teams, man. Yeah. Which when the teams got the way they were, so good. Yeah. So. Yeah, I guess now now you say it like yeah. that, it'd be like uh, having those teams, and then you come the next next year for your kids' tryouts. There'd be that much more kids trying out right. because 
they watch the game, having success in San Jose, going to the playoffs all the time, having those kids come to games and, and seeing that atmosphere being part of it would uh, obviously gravitate them to, you know, I want to try, mom and dad, I want to try hockey. Right. So yeah. there they are, they're at the rink, uh, you know, getting their kids uh, learn to skate lessons or, you know, putting them uh, in on the hockey teams. Some of them had, a lot of, a lot of them had number 12 jerseys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's fun <laughs> to see that. <laughs> 17, almost 18 years old, coming into that camp and um, I have to ask you, I would be remiss in my job if I didn't ask you about playing for Daryl Sutter. Daryl Sutter is a legend, of course, as we know. Um, you played for him, you played against him. Um, it couldn't have been easy, because we know Daryl, and you said Daryl and Dean like those veteran guys. You're a kid coming in. And um, we've, we've seen how Daryl is hard on kids. I mean, he's hard on the young guys. Were, was there any time during your, your first few years it was like, man, this guy? Uh, yeah, there's a few times. Yeah. Obviously, yeah, he, he wanted to... Uh... He had a way of trying to get the best out of you, and um, it was the same for, for everybody. So I think coming into the league with those veteran guys, not not having those veteran guys, it probably would have been a lot tougher, but having those guys there to help me, like, hey, yeah, don't worry about it. Yeah. You know, just play your game. You know, just, just little words of confidence like that. Uh, you know, when you do make a mistake, because there's a lot of mistakes, especially when you're a rookie. <laughs> um, but to have those guys have your back, and uh, help help bring you along is, was was huge for me. The difference in playing for that team, which, which was just Dean had you know, reassembled a team that was mm -hmm. you know had a tough year, and now Daryl comes in and, and new players and veteran guys. You come in, Marco comes in, Freezy's a couple years in the league, yeah. and then the team that became. The Sharks, the team that was always contending, was always in, was winning way more games than they were losing. Yeah. Is there a difference in the feel of that team? When you became, went from a rookie to a leader, obviously there's a difference for you, but as just walking into the room, mm -hmm. walking throughout the community, going to, the, going to practice, being recognized, was there, a, was there a difference in feel for you as a player, as a person? Um, yeah, I think so. I think obviously coming in early on, you're trying to get, you get that foot in the door right. and you want to get all the way in there right. <laughs> in through that door you know and kind of try and make yourself at home and make a spot for yourself and make a career out of it and that, I think that's where where it got to and I think early in the career was we were or early in those seasons we were trying to make playoffs that was our yeah. goal right because and we we and we started my first year we got that eight seed and you know, get that playoff experience was was, was huge early on, and then uh, later on in the career when we had those good teams, it was a little bit different. When you walking into the rink, you'd be like, you know, you got a good feeling like you're coming home with with two points. Yeah. Or, um, so having that feeling and and having the the feeling where you're 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 fighting every night to to get into the the playoffs and to battle, it uh, it helps helps going through that and then having yeah a good team because without those little bit of struggles at the start, you probably don't get to that that high confidence with, with uh, your team. Let's talk about playing in San Jose. Just the atmosphere. You talked about the noise and then, you know, kids watching that and, you know, I want to be a part of that. Um, what was it like skating out of that shark head to start a game? It's, I thought it was one of the best things in the world, to be honest. And uh, you could see how... It, it evolved. All the all the other teams are doing it now, yeah. but it, it they're the original, right? So it's um, as a young kid seeing that, it's like, oh, that's, that's so cool. I want to do that, and to be able to, you know, do that for as many years as I I did, it, it never got old. It was always it was always fun. The noise. As long as you didn't hit somebody coming out or hitting <laughs> shark tooth. That. You hit a shark tooth. <laughs> yeah, Vinny Dampus. Vinny Dampus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lucky he got up and able to play that game. Were you were you always the last guy? Uh, I don't know. Early in my career, yeah. I don't think I was that bold to try and be the last yeah. guy. But I slow. I think I slowly worked my way back, and obviously, uh, I did that because Mary Lemieux was was my idol growing up, and he always went out last. So, right. what was the what was the was it? Walk, 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 or were you? By the time you hit the ice, were you moving? I was running. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was. It was like one or two, maybe three strides, depending on how amped up I was, I guess. <laughs> and uh, yeah, just try and get go through that shark head as fast as possible. Get going. And the noise. Yeah. Man. 
But in the ways in, in the playoffs, it must have been even more. Yeah, it's there's nothing like a playoff game, and especially at the Shark Tank. And uh, it's a little bit. It's pretty cool now that I get to go to the games with my kids right. uh, and get the fan experience. That you know, you're you're in the locker room. You don't get to see all the pregame show and. I mean, sometimes we'd see it uh, when we were playing and that, but yeah. it's a little bit different. Like, I'm, I'm thinking to myself the other night, they should have been playing this in the locker room before <laughs> games. Like, it would have got all the guys jacked yeah, up, you know? Jacked up yeah. and up with other toe. What, what, kind, what were you like before the game? Because you were always, from, from our yeah. from, you were always like this. Yeah. I, so when Vinny Damfus came to, to us, uh, I remember talking to Dean and um, probably Daryl at the time too, he's like, you know, watch him. And there was a lot of, like, I watched all all these guys, but they said, you know, see how he handles himself. And I I, I like to, you know, stay quiet and watch and pick up on different things. And uh, that was one of the things. Vinny was like, like this. Seemed to work for him. So I thought, oh, maybe that's a good thing. And didn't want to waste any energy, too. <laughs> was, but was, was, that, was that a change for you? Did you have to change um, that, your personality? Because... Probably not as much as yeah. you you would think, but it was yeah, it was uh, it was just good to see like somebody that you could do that and be successful for a lot of years, and that Vinny Vinny did that yeah. for a number of years and was right. was a great player for a number of years. Of all those guys, you're all you know you played with so many guys, and I know that you you looked and got lessons from everybody. Who gave you the best lesson? <laughs> <laughs> and any kind of lesson you want to talk yeah. about. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Let's start. Let's start. I'll, I'll narrow it down. Hockey lesson. Like who? Who on the on the team? You, did you watch or did you talk to? You said that. How do you do that? I, I'm thinking. I I know. I have I have something from my agent that pops into my head right away. Uh, Don Baisley yeah. gave me something. Um, Late great Donnie Baisley. Yeah. And uh, he said. He goes, most of the players I talk to, they all have their spot. So try and find out what your spot's going to be and try and perfect that spot. You know once you get to that spot, it's almost automatic that you're going to score there. So, And go out before practice, take shots from that spot. So that was probably one of the, well, obviously it came to my mind right away. So that was one of the things that I, that I took and which used. Me, which makes me think about Jay's shooting club. Tom McClellan, Jay yep. Woodcroft come in. Yep. Uh, I, I've got a text from Jay. As a matter of fact, I asked him about you, and I, I, um, I said, wasn't he a member of the, the shooting club? And he was actually, he was a charter member, he and Pavs. So explain Jay's shooting club to us. Well, for, we wanted to get extra work or work that you could do before practice started, right. like things that you wanted to work on. And uh, we'd always try and get out there early, and, you know, Woody would come out and... He'd be the guy, you know, either giving us things or giving us the passes and working with us. So, yeah. um, or for Woody was really helped me out a lot in my career. Just a, a sounding board and talking to him all the time. And um, he took that. He went that extra mile above and beyond um, to to help to help me and to help a lot of the guys that yeah. that wanted to get better and and do all that work. He tells me. That early in the first year, you went to him and asked, "What do you think of my game? Why? Oh, you're, a, you're an established, you're a hell of a good player. There, you're an yeah. established player. There. What? What made you? Th I, till well, till the day I retired, I was always trying to get better. I don't know, or try and try and keep what I already had. So I, I never, I never got satisfied. I guess. I always tried to keep pushing myself, to always try to get better. So maybe I was too hard on myself, <laughs> probably, but it also might have helped me get he said that further along. He wrote that, by the way. Yeah. 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 Now I'm trying to make sure that my kids aren't hard on themselves. And so hopefully they, I can teach them not to be so they don't have to go through all the ups and downs like I did. Um, Jay also mentions that you guys had a little, he would, he would slip you notes. Yeah. It was, just one or it could be like two or three things uh, that whether it be go get five shots, uh, you know, 
five takeaways or you know three hits yeah. in the first period or whatever it was it was just something to to narrow your focus and <laughs> not have it on the oh i need to score tonight right. focus on what it's going to take to score the process and uh i mean that's that's huge because everybody's always looking at the end result but to take that methodical approach of what it takes to, to score goals, all the things, all the little details that you right. have to do to, to get to get there. Because if you, without those, it's, you know, harder to get the, the end result. Yeah, does the work come before the goal or after the goal, right? Yeah, before, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, when you, when you got to the point where you were Patrick Marlowe, okay? The Patrick Marlowe, mm -hmm. captain of the Sharks, number 12, playing all the games, scoring 30 plus goals all the time and on a, on a winning team. Did you change? Uh, I don't think so. No? No, I don't. What, I, I know the answer is no. I know <laughs> yeah. the answer is definitely no. So what kept you grounded? So speaking of players that you played with and got advice, um, I remember driving Adam Graves, lived close by. Uh, we'd go to the rink sometimes together and uh, I think, I don't, I can't remember, it was early 20s. Right. He looked at me one day, he goes, you're going to be captain one day. And I was like, ah, you know, just kind of blew him off. He goes, but when you do, he said, don't change a thing. That's awesome. He was, yeah. he was something special. Something special. Yeah. But you did, but you changed. You changed, I think, in the, in the way that you approached the game, right? Yeah, I think yeah. so. I think, uh. When obviously when Jumbo came to, that changed the franchise yeah. for the better, obviously, and uh, me selfishly trying to learn from him and uh, pick up things, and I just loved the obviously loved the way he approached the game. Just uh, leave it all out there. After the game, it's done and over with. Nothing you can do. Next day, you can work on things that you want to work on, but um, just move on to the next thing. And that's what I. It was a lot easier for me to do that come playoff time a lot harder for me to do it in the regular season right I don't know why that was but I think well I kind of know why that was but um, there's no time in playoffs to dwell on that but in, in the regular season you kind of you can get in your own head a little bit sometimes to us from the outside looking in mm -hmm. you got jumbo jumbo like for his yeah. name his name in fits it, right <laughs> yeah. his nickname hey bud and all that stuff <laughs> and you're we're the quiet guy. Was that always the case in the room? In the room? Yeah. Uh, yeah, for the most really? part, I think. Yeah. I mean, I, I didn't sit there and not speak or anything no. like that. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, no. I'd be, I liked having a good time. I was. I mean, I'd be around Jumbo all the time too. So I'm, you know, part of whatever he was getting into. <laughs> so most of the time, I was part of it. So. What was the secret about that team? That really, when you guys were the team and, and always a contender, what was the secret? Because um, there was something about that team, and I, I don't know what it was. Um, I think just having that, everybody having the same goal and buying in. Um, once you play a certain way and have success and you get that taste, it's easier for the coaches, I think, to pass their message down because you got, you got air, you got all the big guys. You got Jumbo doing it. You got Pavs doing it. You got Burnsy doing it. Yeah. You got, and that goes to my point when I first came in. You had no choice. You got to fall in line. Otherwise, you're gonna stick out like a sore thumb and be gone, moved on somewhere else, or back down to the minors. But just building that culture, I think, was was the biggest thing. But knowing if you put in the work. Your buddy's gonna put in the work. You're gonna have, you're gonna get success. But off the ice too. You guys are like this. Yeah. You're thick as thieves, as they say. Yeah. Yeah. I think you have to have those that type of bond for winning teams where you can trust the the guy sitting next to you that he's gonna put in the effort, do his job, be in the right positions. Um, but then, you know, liking each other too away from the rink yeah. translates to. You know, playing for each other on the on the ice, and um, we had a great group of guys that, and Jumbo was really good at that, and Pavs and and Burnsy, like those those personalities. Just Dougie Murray, the more the merrier. The more we can get together, the better. Uh, the more we get everybody together and hang out and just 
you know, talking <laughs> and uh, getting to know each other. Those dinners on the road, you know, always having different, going out to dinner with different guys, getting to know them and know what they're about away from the rink is, is huge. Who is your closest friend? Throughout the years? Yeah. Uh, well, Jumbo, Pavs. Burnsy. I remember you and Pavs always. Yeah, we sat. Well, we sat, sat together in the plane. Yeah. Okay. He had terrible taste in licorice. You, 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 you <laughs> ate Twizzlers, which was the right way to go. Yeah. Um, but you guys seemed like you were in the same. Yeah. You're always yeah. linked. I think uh, me and Pavs kind of got together a lot because he was he was kind of always looking at maybe things outside the box or trying new things. Um, you know, into nutrition, into um, curve, just changing curves, doing different things, uh, you know, trying to find plays that, that we can use in the, in the game, just different things that always think and always trying to get better. And that you want to surround yourself with, with those type of people. When you became the captain, did you, did you understand the, the responsibility that brought, or did you think it brought a new responsibility? Adam Gray says, don't change. Uh, yeah. And I think that's the one endearing thing well, one of the more endearing things about you is that you've never changed. You've yeah. never, you're still the kid from Anaheim, Saskatchewan. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I didn't understand all the things that it entailed. It was a little bit of a learning process at the start. Uh, you know, talking to the media after games. Um, you know, setting. Oh, wouldn't love that. Yeah, <laughs> setting up. Uh, yeah, especially after tough losses. You know, you want to be, you want to go out there. Um, but yeah, I didn't. You know. Uh, knowing that, um, you know, helping with scheduling, with you know, talking to the coaches. Now they bring in a group of guys, which is which yeah. is good um, to get everybody's input and uh, team parties, things like that. Trying to, you know, I think when you try and get to a spot that your game's comfortable, now you can help other players out a lot more, and uh, you know, be more aware of what's going on in the room, how guys are feeling, and, and things like that. It was one of the more one of the things that I started to learn more as my captaincy went on and um, was able to help out younger guys. Did you think, yeah, did you, I was going to say, did, did that carry over from the, the, the guys that you first came in the league with? Mm -hmm. Did you feel like a responsibility, you were your brother's keeper kind of thing? Yeah. Yeah, I think, uh, I, I always want to help guys out when, you know, when you see, like, I, if you're, if I was down, I'd want somebody to come, you know, help me. I always try and put myself in somebody else's position and, and see, well, what would they need? A, what do they need this at this time? Or yeah. what, what do they need right now? Do they need a, a pad in the back? Do they need a kick in the pants? You know, something like that. Mike Babcock, who coached you, uh, you won, you won gold medals with, with Babs, mm -hmm. another Saskatchewan guy. Yep. I asked him, I said, give me your thoughts on Patrick Marlowe. He was a great example. He did everything right the first time. I coached him, I think it was a 17 year old all-star in the WHL. And even then he was doing things right. At the Olympics, he was just a real dependable guy, two-way guy we could play against the best people when it came on the other team. And we, same thing when he played for us in Toronto. He was the example to all the guys how to live, how to train, how to work, and just a real good person. You won championships with that man, mm -hmm. gold medal. Biggest game in the history, I think, of Canadian hockey and probably U.S. hockey as well. What, is, what does that mean when he says that? That's, that's a huge, huge compliment coming from him and very, very humbling. I think, uh, you know, like you said, winning championships with them, Olympics, and to have a guy like that in your corner um, was obviously helped my, helped my career out. Um, being able to get on those teams and um, it's pretty cool to hear those those words that, that he said and probably the reasoning why I was able to make those teams is uh, you know being being good at what I did both ways and that's kind of the, early on you just think all offense 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 right. younger you know and I had talks with with Babs about that you know he goes these guys the young guys they want the hair flying the jersey <laughs> flying you know they want to be feeling good but it's it's the things uh, to win games, it's the, you know, playing both sides of the puck and, and, and uh, playing, competing hard every night. You're in that Olympics. It is gigantic. It's in Vancouver. You've got on the team Heater, Danny Heatley, Jumbo, 
you from the sharks, right? Mm -hmm. And Boiler. Out in Boiler, that's right. Yeah. Sorry, I forgot about Danny. Yeah. Should never forget about Danny. Mm -hmm. And Boiler. That's great. You're playing against your great friend, Joe Pavelski, and your coach, Ronnie Wilson. Yeah. Biggest game, I think, in Canadian hockey history. It's a huge moment. Mm -hmm. Did you allow yourself to think about them? Or did you? Um. Because damn, Pavs almost won it for them on that on that turnaround yeah. shot a little long ago. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you think about a yeah. little bit going into the game, but yeah. once the game starts, it's like okay, like right. you don't want to look you don't want to look silly out there. You don't want to do anything wrong. You want to you know you want to play put your best foot forward. So, um, I mean, obviously you do think about them, and then especially after you think about the handshake. Them, yeah. Yeah. What'd you say to Pavs? Do you remember? I don't. I don't remember, but it just you know. Yeah. What do you say? It was a hell of a game. Yeah, it was. Yeah. So what's that like? You know, it happened twice to you, right? Mm -hmm. It didn't happen twice. You won. Sorry, yeah. you won two gold medals. When that gold medal goes around your neck. Yeah. Sur very surreal. I think. Um, you know, I ta I after talking uh, after we won it, I think came back and was talking to Rob Blake about it, and you know, he's won a cup, he's won Olympic golds, and. He kind of said to me, he goes, you know, he goes, I think it's actually pretty hard to win those Olympic gold medals. You know, it happens every four years and they only, and they have to pick the team from, from all the best players in, in the world. So for him to say that to me after it was, you know, he makes you stop and think to have Rob Blake say that to you. It's like, yeah. oh, that's, it's special. What was Rob Blake like as a teammate? Ultimate teammate. Yeah. Great person, great player. I mean, you want, you want him, I can see why people wanted him on your team for sure he um i was even learning from him too i you know at that really, at, at that, at that been age in the league for 15 years by then but yeah. just to see the way he approached the game too yeah. and the way he'd been in the game for for that long it's like okay well maybe you know he's on to something here maybe i can you know help do what i'm doing is it can transpire to what what he's done all right let's get to uh more of the Sharks. One thing that I always just amazed me is that Patty was always there. Patty was always a shark. Patty was there first. He was out in the ice first. Patty was in the, mm -hmm. in the weight room first. Patty was always there. Can you put into words what it meant to be a San Jose Shark? All right, that's, that's a tough one. I think uh, it was pride. Um, you know, being hot, like thankful to be a shark, um, excitement, uh, pa passion. I think being passionate. I think, especially when we had all those those great teams. They're sexy teams. Right? Yeah, it was just, and then being able to play, play with those great players. You knew you were going to get chances. You knew it was going to be like the game was fun you know you're yeah. coming to the rank you're and uh and you're gonna win like you know you yeah. you know it's a good chance you're gonna come home and you're gonna have the two points so but and then uh what's what's fun now is talking to uh, other players uh that, that we played against during those times and like oh we hated coming to that barn <laughs> you know and to, and to see it from their perspective yeah. as well it was it's pretty cool to see both sides um you talk about the work that you put in to get to the point where when you were on the ice, you were, you know, you were Patty Marlowe when you were scoring those big goals. Are there, was there any goals that you just went, that was a big, like you, you had a knack for scoring the big goal for the Sharks, and yeah. especially in the playoffs, right? Yeah. Was there, are there any that, that stick out in your head that's like, oh man, that one was, that was a good goal? Oh boy. Because one of the things that, one of the things that Todd mentioned, that Jay mentioned, that Mike Babcock mentioned was big goals. Yeah. You did it against Babs when he was in Detroit. Todd and of course Todd and Jay were coaching you. Yeah. So um so there's another story there's a little bit of story behind okay. that one. Uh so again Don Don Baisley's my agent. He had uh, a lot of other like Joe Sackick, Tamu, Tamu, yeah. Theo Fleury, like all yeah. these these big name guys. And uh I don't know how the conversation came up, but he had been talking to Joe Sackick about it. He go and anyways, I think Don maybe asked him, what, what do you think of Patrick? He goes, scores big goals. 
And he told me that story and it kind of stuck with me over the years. I was like, okay, well, anytime a, like a situation came up where it's a big time, or next goal, overtime, right. or late in the game, is like, okay, this is where, this is where I can do my stuff, or this is this is where I can excel. So that was that stuck with me, and to have somebody like Joe Sackick say it, it was like, oh, okay, well, yeah, now I can believe it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but one goal that to stick out, I think, would probably be the Detroit goal. But any any OT goal or uh, late late in the game yeah. winning goal, those are those are my favorite, I guess. Do you remember that goal? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, I've seen it enough on, <laughs> on replays and everything like that, but um, I also, the goal against Vancouver when we swept them, I think might have been, I don't know if yeah. it might have been the oh, first time we, we swept yeah. a, a, a series for a while. Yeah. And, uh, and because we, they had, we'd always battled with them, it was, that, that was one of, a good, good feeling yeah. to be able to do that. And especially in four games, so you don't have to play them that much yeah. more. Jumbo get... finally shot the puck for crying out loud. <laughs> you being a smart guy, I'm going to the net. Yeah. Jumbo's going to shoot. Did you know he's going to shoot? No. No, because no. he never uh, No, you never know, yeah. So you just, I I know playing with Jumbo, you just go to the net with your, your right? stick on the ice and it's going to find you. <laughs> well, okay. We're, we're going to go a little bit off topic. <laughs> the goal in Dallas. The pass. The behind the back one? Yeah. I, I don't even know how to explain that one. Yeah. Like, I, I think, I think my, it was... my explanation was exactly that. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how he did it. I don't know how he saw you and how did you know he was I think we there? I think we like I think we made eye contact before and I just kind of like okay well if he's going to make this pass I need to be here and he you know, right on the tape. <laughs> yeah. One of the so, one of the better goals. Always at, you always got to be ready when you're playing with Jumbo. Is that right? Yeah, oh, yeah. Um being uh talking about that barn being in that barn and everything else. Was what one of the things? I mean, you you played more hockey games than anybody in history. You passed another great Saskatchewan and one of the greatest of all time in Gordy. I mean, do you ever sit back and go, huh? Do you ever look back on it and just reflect on that? Uh, yeah, I've been able to do that a few times, and I still still got to pinch myself. Like that's crazy to. Small town farm boy entering Saskatchewan to, you know, eventually breaking Gordy Howe's record it was it's you can't you don't think of that you don't you know it's not something that comes into play you just head down keep working go be out on that for me it was just I wanted to be out on that ice as much as possible. Yeah. Why? Um, Thanks. <laughs> uh, you're going to make me say it. I'm going to make you say it. Just, let's love it. Absolutely love it. Just nothing better than playing hockey. Now you're going to make me cry. <laughs> if Tom Brady's retiring and he said, he wouldn't change a thing. Would you? <sighs> I know people. I know people say that. Obviously, yeah. that there's. I would have loved to win a Stanley Cup. Yeah. I really would have. But as far as um, the people I met along the way, <clears throat> uh, the ups and downs that I had to go through, yeah, I wouldn't change that stuff at all. Made you who you are. Yeah. And I guess that's, and looking back now, it's the way it was meant to be, so. Um, one of the things that Mike, we just read, Mike talked about how great a team person you are, just a real good person. And, and we'll go back, and, you know, and I always thought this was the coolest thing about Patrick Marlowe, is that you went living with the Rudys to taking in Austin Matthews and Mitch Marner, two stars. In the, in the National Hockey League now, when they were kids. And I don't know if you remember, but I was broadcasting in Edmonton. And you guys came to Edmonton, and we happened to meet each other at the walk light. Mitch and Austin and you. Okay. Do you remember the people coming up and asking for the autographs? Yeah. 
They ask Austin, they, they ask, ask you, me. and I looked at you, and, and, I, and they asked Austin, they asked, uh, and yeah. they asked Mitch, Mitch, and I asked you, and you smiled and you went, they don't want <laughs> they don't want mine. Yeah. But you said it was great. Yeah. It was fantastic. <laughs> yeah. No, I, yeah, I do. That happened more than once. That's, but yeah. it's uh, all the power to them. I think yeah. it, they, they're great for hockey, obviously, how dynamic those two are. And the way the game's evolving again, it's, I think it's taken another, another step to letting the more skilled players show what they got. So it's, it's pretty cool that uh, they're doing that now. Were they like you were with the Rudys, with the boys? Oh, Christina, yeah. there was times that Christina would say, it's like I've got two more boys now. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, they'd, they'd come over and they'd play the, they'd go down and play mini sticks after, <laughs> or bigger, like, in our little hockey room there in Toronto, and uh, I'd help Tina clean up and uh, dinner and <laughs> do some dishes before I went down there, let them, let them go there, get some of the energy out, but they... They keep coming up like let's go let's go so we go down and either something would be broken a window you know window would be bro uh open or cracked open or shirts are off because it got so hot down there and <laughs> yeah it was it was great having them around and and for them to be around the boys and show that you know you get older but you don't have to <laughs> grow up you can still play <laughs> yeah did um how much did your brother, Richard, who was a hell of an athlete, CIAU champion, a Canadian yeah. University champion, Vanier Cup winner, how much did that big brother influence you as a big brother with those two? Um, I'd say quite a bit looking, looking at it now. Um, I always looked up to your, your big brother and, right. and see the things that he did. and um, Thank God he didn't... Uh, beat me up as much <laughs> as too bad uh growing up because i didn't i don't think i was the nicest little brother to him <laughs> trying to get trying to get him in trouble all the time but uh speaking of that work ethic though he was he yeah he was my dad's you know right hand man and he lucky for him he'd uh you know he'd be the first one out on on the tractor going around the around the field and like and i was younger and i was like oh you know, good for him. He leaves me time to go shoot pucks. <laughs> but yeah, without without uh, somebody like him to look up to and uh, you know play with and uh, learn from, it made things a lot easier for me throughout my year, career. So on the 25th of February this month, yeah. your jersey will be the first one retired going up in the San Jose Sharks rafters. Have you allowed yourself to think about it? Uh, it's a little, yeah, it's nervous, it's exciting, it's, uh, you know, a little, a little scary too. <laughs> it, um, yeah, it's all those things. So I try and keep, it's coming up quick. So yeah, it's <laughs> coming up fast. Yeah, so uh, I'm excited to, you know, have the opportunity to thank a lot of people again um, to get back in Sharks Ice. We're having the alumni game, I'm pretty excited about that. Lots of guys are coming back. Lots of that. guys are coming back. and. Uh, very uh that's the support staff i'm talking about that like, yeah. that's it's i get floored by all the yeah. support um and these are great great people great teammates uh uh great support staff you know trainers yeah. uh, oh, massage yeah. therapists yeah. uh you know the body gurus you know guys like that it's they all they all had a part to play in uh, in my career you, do you give yourself a chance to think about when it gets up there? Or are you just, you try to, yeah. I, 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 like, <laughs> to me, it's, it must be at times overwhelming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it is. I think, uh, um, you know, just trying to think back of all the stories. And I think that's the, the, the biggest thing is being able to talk to people because everybody remembers, remembers you know different stories, yeah. and yeah. you you forget them uh, sometimes, or they're not they're not right right there for you to grasp. But I'm looking forward to getting back there and seeing everybody and, and talking talking old I, stories. I can't imagine, and, I can't imagine that that alumni game when you guys get together, like the stories that you'll tell. Yeah. Like from our plane rides, we had some interesting. Yes, ones. we had some interesting <laughs> ones. Some emergency landings. Yeah, but <laughs> remember that one out of Dallas, Dallas. We and yeah. we had to circle and um do you remember brad stewart in that one yep i was just gonna say yeah 
So, okay. Yeah. You tell us through. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, uh, we have the landing gear, right? So, yeah. So, what we take off we'll and take it off. shakes like crazy because the plane, the tire, the tire, tire broke and hit the hydraulics. Hydraulics, right. Hydraulics. Yeah. Um, so, either they got, did the wheels get up? The, the wheels got back up, the wheels but then, got back up, but, but we, we couldn't get them back down. Right. So, one of the tech engineers yeah. had to crank the tires <laughs> right. back down. Right. Uh, to get, and so we're circling and we're dumping fuel. Circling, dumping fuel, yeah. and then uh, we land. There's a yeah. runways full of uh, emergency vehicles. Super uh, suit guys. Everybody, yep. Yeah, everybody's lit up, and uh, we look over. And Brad Stewart's still sleeping. He's t- <laughs> he's, he fell asleep before we took off, and then when we landed, he thought we'd been there and got yeah. there. <laughs> we sit in the already. No, no. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah. Jeez, we had some adventures, yeah. that's for sure. So our, when you look back at your career, yes, there's the big goals and the big games and the Olympic gold medals and that close to winning a championship. But is that what, is that the thing for you, the stories and the times? Yeah, I think so. I think that's, that's what, I mean, last night we had an alumni game here in, in Florida and uh, being able to, to play with players that I played with and against, but also to there's some older players too that I looked up to and admired, and uh, being able to thank them uh, that I was able to enjoy their careers. Like yeah. I saw, I saw Paul Coffey and Alf Samuelson after after the game. They didn't play in the game, but yeah. shaking their hands, and um, you know they bring the prospects in uh, Stanley Cup Finals to meet both sides of the teams and, and clubs, and I was able me Jumbo. Uh, I think Roberto Luongo, we were all in uh, Philly or Detroit when they were playing 96, yeah. 97 and uh, went into the locker room and Paul Coffey was one of them and he took the time to talk to us. So I, I, th- I said uh, thank you to him last night, I said thank you for taking the time. He goes, he goes yeah, and he goes, and, and what did you do when, uh, when it was your turn to do it? And I said, yeah, it was Mitchie was, uh, Austin and yeah. was there and um, I think... Uh, who else was in that draft? Okay, remember now. It, it was a hell of a good draft. Was it uh, uh, Lane A, Lane, maybe? Yeah, yeah. Lane A was in that one. Yeah. Yarvi was in that one. Yeah, so yeah. it was just, yeah, some good players. we got to talk to, to them, and that was the first time I met, met Austin, was at the you know, Stanley Cup Finals that year. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, on the 25th, your family's going to be there. Mom and Dad coming in? Yeah. yeah. Um, a lot of people coming down. From, a lot of people coming oh, down. Yeah. Lots of fans going to be there. Why do you think, and this is a hard question, I, 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 I mean, granted it's unfair, but why do you think the fans loved Patrick Martel like they did? Like, the fans adored you. Why? Oh, boy. Um, I don't know, maybe just because I was there for so long. <laughs> 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 the only name that kept popping kept, kept popping up. It was always there. Twelve Martin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'd I'd like to think it was because the way I carried myself, the way I I played. Um, I would like to think it's because of the the work I put in, the work the on the ice, um, off the ice. Um, you know, hopefully, I was able to. The fans felt appreciated because that's I do appreciate them and. Uh, tried to spend as much time signing autographs as as as, <laughs> as, uh, as I could, and and try to give back because I, you know, being on the other other side now, you take, I get a new perspective for, you know, my, I take my son to a baseball game and he's waiting for an autograph, and then I'm like, now I'm on that other side of things. So, it's like I really wish, I really hope this player stops and signs for my kid because it'll mean the world to him. So you you get that perspective, and now I, I'm looking back like I'm glad I. You know, I did take the time because I know how much it means to a parent for their kid to get that interaction with, with somebody they look up to. Speaking of the fans, we have something to show you. Just press that play up and top there. Right. April 22nd, 2004. I was a little kid. Um, it was the playoff series against Colorado. Uh, I was there with my little shark's teddy bear that I gotten. Uh, sitting in front of a TV, and Patrick Marlowe goes off for three goals, a hat trick against Colorado. I can remember Randy Hahn's call to this day, a hat trick for Patrick. Honestly, inspired me to continue playing sports growing up. 
Uh, it's the reason I wear number 12 in all my sporting endeavors. Really thankful for Patrick for everything. I w when I see Marlo's number get retired in the rafters, I know I don't want to, but I know I'm gonna cry, but it's gonna be one of the best, most emotional experiences that I've ever had as a Sharks fan because number 12 solidifies what is the greatest thing about San Jose Sharks. I have planned my entire season and personal life around being here that night. I, uh, it is something I will absolutely never forget. I get chills just thinking about it. Seeing Patty's number is just gonna make me so proud that he was a shark. Um, I uh, have to say that I was supposed to be traveling for the 20 game on the Mar February 25th, and I told my work, I cannot travel. I have to be at this game. Um, there's just no way I'm going to miss the, the game in which they retire his number. Probably cry first because <laughs> uh, he deserves so much and that's just such a small minute thing of how much he deserves in recognition of his efforts to the city of San Jose and the Sharks and what he means to everyone, especially fans. Um, you know, we might be a small part of his life, but he's such a big part of our hockey life. He really is the reason I'm a fan and I am just, uh, I'll be a fan for life because of the impact he had on me and the game and the Sharks. Patrick, I love you. You're, you're one of my all-time favorite hockey players and I can't wait to see your jersey number retired by the Sharks. Go Sharks! Um, honestly, thank you. Um, number 12 forever. Thanks, Drew. Oh, that's uh, speechless. That's that. Uh, makes me feel good about myself. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, a small part of his life, but a big part of ours. Oh. You got me crying. You got me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. That's. I, I'm glad you showed me that. I love that. Um, now I'm a little bit more nervous for uh, <laughs> for the Jersey uh, retirement. Um, those are some great, kind words that the that everybody said. I don't know what to say. No, listen, <laughs> hey, hey, I mean, well, I'll say it. From my point of view, you know, you and I came back to the, well, I came back to the Sharks at the same time. Um, we're both from Saskatchewan. For me, it was an honor and a privilege. Like, like, I love you, man. I think, you know, I was always proud to say that mm -hmm. you were our captain. I was always proud to watch you. It was an honor to broadcast your games, get to talk to you, hang out in the dressing room with you. But, you know, from one small town guy to a, yeah. another, thank you. Oh. Thank you. You deserve it. Oh, thank you very much. I do appreciate that. And I, I don't know, I probably, you probably haven't told the story about this, but I remember early on in, a, in my career, I'd come to you and talk to you about, yeah. about things that you saw yeah. for, for my game, and you'd always have something for me, and like I said, I was always trying to get better, and anybody who wanted to you know, listen to me or answer some of my questions and took the time, I appreciated it.